we're going to talk about the mean value theorem and see one example of how we can use it. The mean value states that if you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, from any two points, and also differentiable on the open interval from A to B. So let me just draw a picture of what that would look like. For the most part, it's just a regular old normal function. If you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, and also um, differentiable on the closed interval from A to B, then, here's the key, there exists some C between A and B, so A is less than C is less than B, such that, and this is going to look fancier than it is, it's not that fancy, such that F prime of C, the derivative at C, is the same thing as the difference quotient from A to B f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So let's just read this carefully again. As long as you have a function that is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval, which is, you know, a normal function, then there must be some point somewhere in between a and b. I don't know where, but somewhere in here, there's a point c such that the derivative at c is the same exact thing as the difference quotient from A to B. And I should point out when we say sum C, quick little note here, I should really rephrase that as at least one. See, there certainly could be more than one. So let's just take a look at what this looks like. Remember, the difference quotient is the same thing as the slope of the secant line f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So it would be the same thing as the slope of this secant line. All we're saying is that somewhere in between, I'm going to change the color so it's clear, somewhere in between a and b, somewhere in here, there's a point where the slope of the secant line is exactly the same as the slope of the tangent line. Looks like I found it right here. So that means C would be there. That's all that the mean value theorem says. If a function is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval, there must be some point in the middle where the slope of the tangent line, or the instantaneous rate of change, is exactly the same as the slope of the secant line, which is the average rate of change. That's it. So let's take a look at what they might ask you about this. Here's a function, f of x is x to the 1 third, which a quick reminder, that's another way of saying the cube root of x. So does x satisfy the hypothesis of the mean value theorem on the interval from 0 to 8? It certainly helps to visualize the graph. doesn't always answer for sure, but the graph of the cube root, hopefully you remember from Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, looks like this. It is continuous everywhere. So f of x is continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 8. And it is also differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 8. Which it is, if we take a look at it, we can see that from 0 to 8, this function is continuous and differentiable. There's no cusps, there's no vertical tangents or anything like that. 
as long as I'm not including zero. So this next question just takes us, asks us to take a slightly closer look at this. Is there an interval over which the hypotheses are not satisfied? Yes, any interval that includes zero. Remember, this is just for this function. So for example, the interval from negative two to two. Because the cube root function has a vertical tangent right there when x is zero. And the derivative is not defined at a vertical tangent. So f prime of zero does not exist. So the function would not be differentiable on any interval that included zero. That's why it is actually important that there's a difference between the continuity, the condition that's checking continuity and the one that's checking differentiability. We only need, for MVT to apply, we only need the function to be continuous on the open interval. So then, here's what they actually ask us to do. We want to find the value for c. So I'm going to draw a bigger version of my graph. And I'm only going to draw the part from 0 to 8. This point is 0, 0. Hopefully remember the cube root of 8 is 2. So we want to find the point such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we know what f of b, we know what f of a are, we know what b and a are, we just need to write f prime of c. So reminder that if f of x is x to the one third, then f prime of x is equal to one third x to the negative two thirds, which we can write as, an, as a radical, or if you prefer, just go ahead and call it x to the negative two thirds. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I'll write it as a radical so it's a little bit easier to read. So 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared, that's my f prime of c, sorry I shouldn't say that as x squared, I should say that as c squared because we're talking about f prime of C is equal to f of b, that's 2, minus f of a, that's 0, over b minus a. So I want to know when is 1 over 3 times the cube root of c squared equal to 1 fourth. And so I can solve this equation. I'll get the, the c into the numerator. So 4 third equals the cube root of c squared, or I'm going to go back to my um, rational exponent because it's a little bit easier. And then just to solve that, I would raise both sides to the 3 halves power. And that would give me my solution for c. c is 4 thirds to the 3 halves, which you could simplify and rational if you want, but it doesn't seem all that worth it. So let's just see on Desmos what this would look like. I'm going to graph f of x is equal to x to the 1 third. And then we're going from 0 to 8, so I might as well get rid of everything else. And I'm going to compare the secant line, which would be y minus 0 is equal to the slope of the secant line. Remember, that's f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So that's f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus 0. So there's the secant line. I can make this a little bit bigger so we can see it better. And if we want to compare that to the tangent line, 
at the point C. Remember that the C that we got was 4 thirds to the 3 halves. So I'm going to graph the line y minus, I don't really need to worry about taking the cube root of it. I can just plug in f of uh, 4 thirds to the 3 halves equals the slope. So that is prime of, again, 4 thirds to the 3 halves times x minus 4 thirds to the 3 halves. Wait there until the very end. I put the exponent in the wrong spot, and there it is. Now you can see that we found the point. Uh, four thirds to the three halves is about one point five four. We found that point where the slope of the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line, is exactly the same as the slope of the secant line.